just to get your impressions and your thoughts on being named and called for the starting position in, in your first game. Okay, just kind of walk us through that if you could. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's been a blessing. Um, you know, I've been, you know, rolling with the ones through camp, but, you know, final decision actually comes down to the first game. And, uh, you know, these guys have a lot of trust in me. Um, feel like I've been doing well in practice enough to um, be able to showcase what I can do out there on the field. Um, mm -hmm. It was an amazing experience. You know, it was stuff that people dream about, you know, every night. Um, something that I dreamed about when I was a kid. Um, and it, it was fun. You know, I had a lot of fun out there. And did you you had a big, a big part there, of course, in the, in the run and pass blocking fulfilled your missions very well and gave of course your quarterback enough time talk about how you felt with that knowing the course of the game he was going to be doing very very good work and solid work and as a quarterback yeah we're um I mean Matthew's an awesome quarterback I mean he's probably going to be in the hall of fame um you know you give him time back there um you know he's going to make the good throws so uh it's a big part of you know what we always talk about um is just giving him enough time to throw the ball and I feel like we did that and your comfort zone right there to your left and to your right is my last question there, Steve. There's so many more, but we got to be fair with everybody here, of course, to get their questions in. But just how'd you feel out there as the game from first quarter to the, towards the end of the game? Or how'd you? Yeah. Um, you know, the nerves really didn't hit me until the national anthem. I don't know why it always happens like that for me. But um, after a couple of plays, you know, you start getting the groove of things, get a couple hits on yourself or a couple people hit you, you start feeling yourself. And, and um, you know, I felt like that second drive, you know, is really when I, you know, got comfortable and just realized, you know, Rob, Rob Havenstein actually came up to me before the game and was like, you know, what the difference is between college football and NFL. And he said nothing. And I was like, yeah, it's just football. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's something that I definitely remembered when I was out there. So uh, definitely calm, calmed some nerves. Thank you, Steve. It was good to see 73 yeah, with ABILA on your back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Those memos. Jordan. Hey, Steve, how's it going? It's going good. Um, just wanted to ask you about Tyler Higby and Bryson Hopkins. Um, when you have tight ends that are doing all kinds of things to expand your blocking surfaces, what does that do for the line? Uh, I mean, it opens up a lot of things we can do. I mean, we can trust them, you know, when, when they have, when they have double teams with the tackle, we can just add them on, you know, open up some more holes. Um, you know, those guys are very capable of doing so in uh, the way they, know that they're capable of doing so is, is definitely encouraging. Um, we don't have one dimensional tight ends that can just, you know, catch the ball. And, you know, they definitely like to get gritty down there and, you know, help run the ball. And that's definitely encouraging to see as a offensive lineman. And then um, if, if someone asked you to describe um, Alaric Jackson, mm -hmm. how would you describe them to him? Yeah. Um, I think this is his third year. Um, there's, I have a lot to say, so it's not just one word, but <laughs> I think this is his third year, but I mean, man, uh, he's, to me, he's a veteran, you know, he knows the the routine of things. He knows what's going on. He knows what's his, what it's like to play. Um, he knows how to overcome adversity. And that's definitely an encouraging thing to have, uh, when you're a rookie, you know, someone that knows what they're doing, um, right next to you. So, um, you know, I'm definitely thankful, you know, for him. Um, so yeah. Um, and then personality wise with him, um, <laughs> Rob Havenstein has uh, described him in, in sort of a fun way. He's like very calm. Uh, he says he might as well be like smoking a cigarette out there. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, definitely. I, I, I definitely co-signed that, man. It's just funny. Like you can tell he was locked in um, all the time. Um, and, you know, that's definitely, you know, another encouraging thing to see. But, you know, he, he's never going to be too uptight. and He's never going to be too high. He's never going to be too low. And that's just stuff that you need as a football player. So. Thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. Stu. Hey, Steve. Thanks for making the time this afternoon. Appreciate it. Man. Uh, yep. Uh, just wanted to ask you how uh, how did the expectations of your NFL debut compare to the reality, aside from the anecdote you shared about what Rob Higginstein told you? Yeah. Uh, man. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, it's first NFL game, that's a big, big thing for yourself. Um, you know, you fast forward into the future you look back at this game this is something you're going to show someone so uh it's, it's definitely a lot of the things i was thinking about um you know i had some goals for myself uh one to not embarrass myself um two and don't get beat don't get beat quickly um that's definitely something you know as an offensive lineman that you you need to have in, in the back uh, in front of your mind um so th those are the things that i held you know when i when i got on the field um just 
my assignment as well. Um, so those things, you know, kept me my head on my shoulders. And then also, uh, I know you don't always match up with Byron Young in practice, maybe only on the chances that he you, they're doing stunt work, something like that. But in those instances where you are trying to block him, how would you describe that? And, and, what's, and what's it like trying to defend him? Yeah, uh, man, he has a motor and it, it's, it's insane. Um, he's a very, very, very quick um, end hybrid linebacker. Um, he, he's very, very quick. Um, he's come around on a couple of twists sometimes. And I honestly, like, if you blink, you miss him. Like, that's exactly how it is. So um, he, he keeps you on your toes when it comes to that as a guard. Yeah. Thanks. And then Adam. Steve, I was curious, like, your thoughts on the way Coleman um, directed the offensive line, especially in that noisy environment and his, mm -hmm. you know, first start with this full unit as a line. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the things that uh, Coach McVay emphasizes is communication. Um, excuse me. We know, like, the environment's going to be crazy, you know, anywhere we go. Uh, and the biggest thing for us is how we communicate. And I felt like he did a very, very good job. He, he's done a great job, you know, even through camp. Since I got here and with just commanding the offense, knowing what to do, knowing where to be, um, you know, him and Brian Allen are are – like each other man like they know the offense very very well and that's definitely some as a rookie you know you, you'd want your center to to know that you know to help you out in times where you're not as confident so yeah were there any plays that stand out to you where he kind of picked something up before the snap that helped you um there were a couple things that we watched in film um honestly for me like I listen to what he says I let him figure it out um you know I know this is my first year and I, I have a lot to to learn um, from him and all the other other offensive linemen, um, because I do want to get to that level where I'm able to understand, you know, every single thing that's going on. Um, but uh, he did have a, a, a lot of good pickups um, and a change of, you know, where the double teams were going. So, yeah.